This 8th generation Chevrolet Corvette is one of the most hotly anticipated sports cars ever. Not only because a Chevrolet Corvette only comes around once in a while after 8 generations since the C1 original in 1953, but also because it's the first ever mid-engine Corvette. Prototypes, skunkworks, mules have been running around for years now, but this is the first ever full production model of a mid-engine Corvette, and that is something to get excited about. But also, the fact that you can get this in a right-hand drive model straight from its Bowling Green American production facility is again super exciting for countries like the UK, Japan, and of course us down here in Australia. There's no need to faff around with right-hand drive conversions. This comes straight from the production facility set up like this with all of the things, all the bells and whistles that you'd expect from a high-end Corvette. So is it any good? Well, that's what we're gonna be finding out in today's video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the eighth generation C8 Corvette down below. And while you're down there, we'd also love it if you could hit subscribe because the more subscribers we get, the more likely we'll be able to drive the Z06 version that's coming along very soon. So why on earth now in 2022, in the time of electrification, is it right for Chevrolet to produce a right-hand drive Corvette? Well, even though the brand has pulled out of right-hand drive markets around the world with the tragic death of Holden, of course, and the selling of Opel slash Vauxhall to the Stellantis Automotive Mega Group in Europe, why would GM produce a right-hand drive Corvette? Well, I think a lot of that comes down to the success of the Ford Mustang. Since about 2013, that car has sold really strongly in right-hand drive markets, including here in Australia, where it makes up 50% of sales in the sub $80,000 sports car market beating vehicles that are more affordable and more fuel efficient, such as the Toyota 86 and Subaru BRZ. But this Corvette is priced really keenly. Around $145,000 is gonna be the starting price here in Australia, putting it up against vehicles such as the Porsche Cayman. But the amount of power on offer and the sub three second naught to 60 mile an hour time that Corvette claims means that this thing is faster than a base 911, which is over $100,000 more expensive. So I think the C8 Corvette is already off to a cracking start in terms of the value proposition. I also think it's off to a great start when it comes to how it looks. It may not be to everyone's tastes and around the rear three quarters, it is a bit bold, blocky, and perhaps a bit brash, but I think from the front end, it has so much Corvette DNA, despite the fact that the cab has moved significantly forwards for this mid-engined example, it still looks really angry, like a grumpy little hornet that's ready to sting you. It's got so much road presence. It's one of the few cars that we drive out on the road where people will actually get out of the right lane for you when you come up behind them here in Australia. And that's actually quite rare for us here in New South Wales. But yeah, I think it looks really great. We've got some fantastic details as well. Of course, this is the coupe. So you've got the Targa roof, which we've got stored in the boot, which I'll get to in a minute. And the door handles are just fantastic. They're hidden down in here. So you just pop that, open the door, and we can get in the Corvette Stingray. If you've ever had to get yourself into a Lotus Elise or an Evora, which is probably more this car's competitor, you'll know that a lot of sports cars aren't that easy to get into, but Chevrolet has paid quite close attention to this by building the Corvette's spine around this central tunnel rather than relying on the outside of this car to give it so much strength. And that means that the actual flanks are quite easy to step over. They're not too high and awkward. So when you go to get into this car, it's actually quite graceful. Sliding down into these gorgeous bucket seats, it's very comfortable and yeah, not too hard to get into at all for such a special feeling vehicle. Now talking of these bucket seats, the final specification of the C8 hasn't entirely been locked in for Australia. We're in the 3LT, which is sort of the mid-spec one, and you've got the carbon edition above that. The 3LT can be told apart by its extended leather package over the 2LT, but these seats are the most aggressive seats. They're the competition sport bucket seats. They have carbon fiber bits on them. They look amazing, and they are super comfortable and figure hugging. If you're much bigger than me though, you might struggle to get in here because the bolsters are really quite tight. Even for me, I'm fairly thin and yeah, it, it feels great for me, but if you're a bigger person, then definitely see if you can sit in one of these cars with the competition seats before you order them. Because in the US, there are two other seat options offered, the GT2 and the GT1, both with more of a focus on long distance comfort. But yeah, if you wanna drive quickly and take this car to the track, then I think these are gonna be fantastic to hold you in. But what about the rest of the interior? Because this thing is pretty wild in here. 
Chevrolet have really gone to town in making this Corvette feel unique. And it's all about the driver. It's kind of like stepping back into a car from the 90s. Remember, even BMW used to do stuff like this, turn everything towards the driver. So the passenger, unfortunately, feels a little bit cut out of the action, even down to this sort of row of switches here, which is a bit of an odd way to solve a problem that maybe didn't need to be solved like this, but it does look cool. And it works quite well for the driver once you figure out where all the switches are, it means you don't have to jump into the eight inch touchscreen to adjust any of the HVAC controls, but you just got to remember that the passenger's down the bottom and the driver's up the top. Once you've done that, not so bad. Onto the 8-inch screen, it is quite small and it doesn't respond that well to the driver's inputs, but you do have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and when you're running that, it does look really good because I'm not that convinced that the Chevrolet software is particularly great though I guess you do have navigation and it sort of works fine when you need to interact with it then in front of me I've got this gorgeous 12 inch digital drivers display that has a real Corvette theme to it. it really fits into the rest of the car right down to the fact that this cowl is shaped like the top of this rather odd sort of hexagonal quartic steering wheel here which yeah, initially I was very skeptical about, but actually when you're out driving this car, because it's got sh such sharp steering responses, you don't need to use the top of it when you're driving quickly. And so it really does make sense. You can hold it in a whole bunch of different places as well, depending on what you wanna do. And of course we've got plenty of buttons on here, but none of them get in the way of getting down to the business of driving. They only really help. You've got your uh, interactions with the digital driver's display here, cruise control buttons here, volume up and down and skip track just down here. And then of course we've got the Z mode button. We'll get more into this when we come to driving this car, but you do have two customizable drive modes, one with this Z mode and the other one using this slightly odd mode control button down here, which gives you a my mode. I personally got it set to have more aggressive mode in Z mode and my mode being something that suits brisk road driving a little bit better. You've also got these quirky uh, gear selector buttons, which actually look really cool. And there's this general feeling of high quality to most of the stuff in this interior. All the materials, this extended leather is really nice and softly padded and quite luxurious to touch, quite opulent. But there are a couple of issues with the build quality in this car. I'm not sure if because we've got an early production model of right-hand drive vehicles, um, these are more prone to happening. It does have 15,000 Ks on the odometer as well, so pretty high for a press car. There is a bit of bunching going on on this Alcantara steering wheel, which you can feel just around the thumbs and around the back of the wheel. The um, plastics up here also don't feel to be screwed together that well, but the majority of this vehicle does feel nice and sturdy. You've also got really clever practical touches, which you wouldn't maybe have expected in sports cars from before. A pair of cup holders here with this nice flip up cover that goes away so you don't have to see it. A decently sized central storage bin that's sort of good for keys or phones. You've got a couple of USB chargers, a USB-A and a USB-C and a little aux jack as well. And this really nifty wireless charging pad, which I think is a really clever idea, helps keep this uncluttered and feeling very pure Corvette Stingray in its design characteristics. Finally, all of the vehicles coming to Australia will have this Bose 14 speaker premium stereo, which actually sounds really good and it really helps make this car feel a little bit more like a GT car. That is really the whole vibe of this thing, a long distance GT Tourer with sporting characteristics when you need it. Let's talk about these buttons as well, because to open the door, it is a slightly funny feeling little electric switch there and that takes a little bit getting used to but when you're used to it it's cool i just wish that america didn't have so many laws where it would be easy to sue someone because you have to have these quite ugly feeling emergency releases down there that kind of disrupt and make it feel a little bit less hidden a little bit less special but hey it is really cool and i think chevrolet's done a great job of elevating the c8's interior of course one of the less good things about a mid-engine car is usually the luggage space on offer but Chevrolet has been smart enough to package two boots into this car, starting with the one at the front. That is able to fit a standard hand luggage size suitcase, which I think is pretty decent. And you can also fit a laptop bag in there as well. In total, there's 357 litres of storage space in the C8 Corvette, which is about 70 litres short of the C7, the front engine rear drive setup. But actually it's not bad. It's also really nicely finished. You've got some sort of nets off to the side here. And currently we've got the much nicer looking number plate blank, because as you can see uh, for the Australian cars and European cars where we have to run front number plates unlike you guys in the USA or at least in some states in the USA we've got this really sort of ugly afterthought looking number plate holder but if you go into the racetrack or go into a show and shine you can stick your nice 
clean looking number plate delete kit on the front and that comes with the car. I think that's a really nice touch. And then we come around the back where we have this lovely little Stingray tramp stamp here and a little bit more storage space, of course. Perfect spot for the roof when you want to take it off on a lovely sunny day like this, though it hasn't been very sunny otherwise in Sydney. You have a really decently sized boot back here, though I'd be careful about putting any items that don't like being exposed to heat, like milk or something like that in the back here on a long journey because it does get hot. And that is because this beautiful 6.2 litre dry sump to V8 sits in front of it. And it is gorgeously presented with exposed carbon fiber. You can see the exposed oil top up zone and it looks fantastic. And I think it's such a great thing to see that Chevrolet has gone to the extra mile to present its engine really gorgeously in the C8 Corvette. They mentioned it in the press pack, they talk about being presented like a jewel, and of course you can see it through that plexiglass rear window and you can hear it. So there's some real advantages of having a mid-engine car that I think offset the slight loss in luggage space over the C8 before, because yeah, it's just awesome to be able to see an engine like that, isn't it? So what does it cost to run a Chevrolet Corvette? Well, it's not cheap to fuel with that 6.2 litre LT2 V8 under the rear deck of this thing. Although it does have cylinder deactivation, which means that when you're cruising on the highway, it runs in a V4 configuration to help save a little bit of fuel. That saw us get 11.2 litres per 100 Ks over about 500 Ks of testing. And I think that's actually pretty good for the performance on offer. In fact, almost astounding. I don't think a four litre flat six in a Porsche Cayman is gonna do very much better than this car. As for servicing, it's due every 12 months or 12,000 Ks, though GMSV hasn't released any capped price servicing for this Corvette. Moving on to the warranty, it's three years or 100,000 kilometers, which is a bit behind the usual cars you'll see us review here at Chasing Cars, but it is on par with what Porsche offers for its Cayman and Boxster and 911 models here in Australia. So, the Chevrolet Corvette in eighth generation C8 form. Now we've already covered where the engine is located, just behind my head. And to be honest, that had me a little bit intimidated, a little bit worried, because in the past, mid-engine cars, especially from manufacturers that don't specialize in doing them, have been a little bit sketchy to drive. All you have to think of is a Toyota MR2 and the words lift off oversteer. And uh, yeah, they can be a little tricky close to the limit, certainly a smaller, lighter vehicle. But in my driving of this C8 Corvette in 3LT form, it's simply not like that. It's a really approachable vehicle out here on the road, even on rough, tough, nasty Australian back roads, which I don't think it was necessarily designed for initially. It seems to work really rather well, and that is somewhat down to our Australian car's high level of specification as standard. We get adaptive dampers, the magnetically controlled Magnaride dampers, which are actually really very high quality items. Now, I haven't tested a C8 without those dampers, but I reckon they make a fair bit of difference because they mean this car is honestly legit legitimately comfortable, not even comfortable, albeit for a sports car, but on the road, this thing sits really nice and flat and it's not a compromising ride. It feels really nice and planted and settled and just, there's no head toss, there's no bob. It feels like you could hop in this thing with these comfortable seats, great driving position and go for a four, five, six or 10 hour drive across the country and not feel tired at the end of it. And I think that's a really crucial part of this particular Corvette model. And that's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's not the ZR1, it's not the Z06 package either. This is just the basic Corvette. But saying that, it's not like this thing's a big old sloppy mess in the corners. In standard mode, there is a little bit of body roll and even in the sportiest full on track mode, there's still a bit of body roll right near the edge of the envelope of this thing. But honestly, it's actually quite helpful and it feels right for a road car and it allows you to explore the balance with that little bit of friendliness, that little bit of movement that really gives you a feeling of security on the road. And that's not to say that it doesn't have a whole load of grip either because I'll swap it into my mode now that adjusts the suspension, the brake feel, the steering weight, which I do think needs to be a little bit heavier than standard. Um, and yeah, it'll just dive through a couple of corners and these things, it's mega. You can really work the chassis, you feel it's mid-engined, it encourages you to trail brake right up to the apex of the corner to get that nose tucked in. So it rewards a good mid-engine driver, someone who understands the balance of these kind of cars. It's kind of a bit like driving a hot hatch on a twisty road. You've got to work that front end to get the best out of it. But um, 
even someone who's come from a previous Corvette or has never owned a mid-engine car before, I think will be quite au fait quite quickly with the way to drive this vehicle. It's not scary, it's not sketchy, it just feels really well tuned and I think that's a big statement certainly for a vehicle like this. Someone like Chevrolet who hasn't done a mid-engine vehicle before, it's really impressive to see what they've managed to achieve with this Corvette. Now it's not all perfect, there is a little bit of understeer and I think that's due quite a bit to the generous stagger that this vehicle's got. It's got two 45mm wide front tyres and 305mm wide rear tyres on a 19 inch alloy wheel at the front and 20 inch at the back. They're Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres so nice and grippy and really well sorted for a mix of road and some light track use but I think the narrower front track means that it's just not biting as much at the front but that's kind of what you want on the road, you want that gentle explorable balance that's never going to leave you feeling scared or never going to bite you and I think that's combined with a long wheelbase of just over 2.7 meters in this vehicle it really does have a nice balance to it and now let's get on to the engine because just behind me is where it's located and that is so good for noise so good for a feeling of specialty it feels like a supercar it really does give off those vibes that kind of crazy driving position, the fact that you can look back and see the engine doing its work, it does have more of a sort of McLaren or even a Lamborghini vibe than I think probably Corvettes have done in the past and that's so nice, especially at $160,000 for this car, like wow. And I should mention the LT2 is quite a, a step up from the LT1 that featured in the C7 in terms of technology. It is basically the same engine, just worked a little bit harder, but it's got a dry sump lubrication system, so that means it can be set lower in the chassis it's inspired by motorsport stuff, the uh, motorsport engine that features in the Corvette race car that's been around since 2019. And it also has a little bit more power than the old engine, 30 kilowatts of extra grunt and then 400 newton meters more as well. But it doesn't rev that high and that again feeds back into this base Corvette's kind of GT-like character. It only revs to 6,500 RPM and it's 6.2 litres of capacity with 369 kilowatts of power and 637 newton metres. It means this car is really rapid. Uh, Chevrolet claim a sub 3 second 0 to 60 mile an hour time and we don't have an Australian 0 to 100 k an hour claim but I reckon it's about 3.2, 3.3 seconds. It feels really quick and that's very much helped by this 8 speed dual clutch transmission that's been developed by Tremec in conjunction with Chevrolet for this Corvette and it is a fantastic gearbox. It is so quick, so sharp and so predictive and when left to its own devices in automatic mode it's pretty decent especially when you switch through one of the seven modes which Best suits your driving characteristics so tour for just cruising around sport for a twisty road and then you've got track for um, track stuff I guess and then you've got Z mode which is customizable and a second customizable my mode you can play around with the settings so you can have a loud exhaust with soft suspension for example I've settled on having my mode set up with the loudest exhaust of course because you want to be able to hear that V8 breathe amazing and with a middle setting for suspension and basically it's the sport mode just with the full-on loud exhaust. Z mode you can adjust other things like traction control settings, the performance traction management in this car. The system is really good. In the dry it allows a lovely amount of slip that is confidence inspiring on the road because you know it's there to catch you but you can play around with the balance and really trim how much oversteer you want on the way out of the throttle because this naturally aspirated V8 has just got the most gorgeous throttle response and lovely long throttle travel that you can really program in like millimetrically how much slip you want on corner exit and then lay into the power of that V8 and just have an absolute blast of a time. It's, uh, yeah, it's a really special feeling car. That's also helped by the electrically controlled mechanical limited slip differential in this Z51 package car. That Z51 performance package is standard on all Australian cars, I should add. And it also brings things like a larger front brake rotor, so 338 millimeters, which is about 15 mil larger. And you also get the same four piston Brembo brake calipers. And this car has adjustable brake feel as well, which you can program into the modes. Again, I like it in that sort of mid setting, that fairly sharp, but without being excessive. And I find it to be a really lovely brake pedal to use. And you can trail brake with such accuracy with it. It's a very enjoyable car to drive. And yet there's some real practicalities about using this Corvette C8 every day. You've got a really nice crisp 360 surround view camera, good front and rear cameras for reversing and all that sort of stuff. You've also got a really technologically advanced front nose lift system which can lift the front of this car by up to 40 millimeters at up to 38 k's an hour to get over driveways and that sort of thing. And the best bit is that you can program in GPS locations so that you can register 
register where you want the car to automatically lift its nose. So if you've got a low driveway at home or at work or something like that, and you want your C8 to remember, well, you just program that in, it does it automatically. I think it's a really clever little touch. Added to that is the visibility out the front of this car, which is surprisingly good. And it's massively helped by the fact that this is a mid-engine car. That front cowl is super low. You've got these two little parapets on the sides of the bonnet that allow you to place this, albeit fairly wide car, and it is a scale larger than a lot of other vehicles. Um, it definitely feels like it fills up Australian roads, but you can place it accurately thanks to that. And quite thin A-pillars that Chevrolet were developing for quite some time to give this really fighter jet like cockpit view out yes rear side three-quarter visibility isn't great but at least these mirrors are fairly generous and they're also set at slightly different uh, locations on the mirror so the left side the passenger side is a little bit further out and that aids visibility as well and yet for all the Corvette C8 seemingly daily usability clever touches like that nose lift system relatively comfortable suspension settings. When you swap down a couple of cogs on the Tremec 8-speed dual clutch gearbox, lay into the throttle, hear that fantastic butch American V8 rumble away behind you and scream to its red line. This car just has a real feeling of specialness, a real unique character about it. And I guess that's why so many people overseas have loved Corvettes for so long and why almost all 200 of these first landings of the Corvette C8 are pretty much spoken for in Australia. I can only imagine what the Z06 package with its 500 kilowatt, 5.5 litre flat plane crank V8 is going to be like when it arrives sometime in the future because that car is going to be really special with an 8,600 RPM red line. Not saying that this base car isn't, I still think the C8 in 3LT guys is a great sports car, especially for the price, but I think that Z06 package is just going to sharpen it, hone it, and make it that much better when it arrives. So, what do we think of the first ever mid-engine Corvette and the first ever right-hand drive Corvette at that? Well, I think it's a really fantastic effort and the value proposition combined with this car's big, brash American road presence and that lovely V8 engine is all things we knew that the Chevrolet Corvette had. But now, in mid-engine form, this car actually drives beautifully. It feels much more like a sports car and it just loves these Australian bumpy back roads. I was surprised at the fact that it feels so suited to our condition here. That's a lot down to the magnetic ride dampers which are standard here in Australia. Now of course there is a little bit of headroom there left for the Z06 and the forthcoming ZR1 because this car feels like it might be a little at sea on the racetrack with just a little bit too much body roll for a truly focused track car. But as an everyday GT sports car that has the presence of a supercar but the price of a sports car, I think this C8 Corvette is a seriously tantalizing option. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section down below and while you're down there leaving your opinion, why not hit subscribe and the bell icon. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.